Yo, what up guys, I'm Sammy and welcome back to the Soul Brothers channel and this is my performance review of the Nike Kyrie 7. So this shoe is going for 130 bucks, or actually, no, this colorway is going for 140. The GR or general release colorways are going for 130 bucks, like the sisterhood colorway, the black and white colorway with like the, like the blue clip. And then of course, uh, th there's a bread colorway coming out as well, which looks super sick. This created colorway is going for $10 more for some reason, but um, you know, basically the, the Kyrie 7 is 130 bucks. If you guys do want to cop, I'll leave a link in the description box. This is Kyrie Irving's seventh signature shoe with Nike. And of course his line has been awesome. I love the ultra curvature and all that. So let's get it started off with the Tractiones. This traction pattern reminds me of a bike tire for some reason. So I just call it the bike tire traction pattern, right? And bike tires are supposed to be durable. You know, because you're riding your bike, <laughs> you want it to last a long time, right? Which this shoe does not. I'm very, very sad to report that the outsole is really, really bad for durability, especially where the high wear area is. I, holy crap, I can't believe how much rubber like ripped off, right? So do not play with the Kyrie 7 outdoors at all ever like the first day i tried i i saw a little bit ripping off but then as i kept playing in it everything just started to rip off i can't believe how bad it is this is probably one of the worst traction patterns for durability that i've used in quite a while and i've been playing outdoors for almost a year now right or not not a year not like eight months you know but yeah so durability not good at all i actually am worried about like even indoor use <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like there are some shoes where even if you're playing on an indoor court, the rubber like frays off a little bit, which is weird, right? But anyways, yeah, so durability is terrible. How is the stop? Okay, so I did play on an indoor court a little bit, but I wasn't able to film because, you know, they closed everything down again. So I'm sorry about that, but I did not, not play, but I did test it out a little bit on an indoor court, right? When the gym was open for a little bit. It seemed to have a pretty good bite, you know? Uh, I mean, it was a little dusty in there, so it was picking up a little bit of dust. But then when I cleaned the area, you know, I did have a good stop for a little bit. I would say uh, it's a little inconsistent and I would definitely say it doesn't have the best stop in Kyrie's line. As far as outdoor use goes though, it's a little inconsistent as well on outdoor courts. So, you know, for the most part, it was a pretty good stop, but if I was doing a very, very hard lateral movement, it would slip out. So, I, I mean, I wasn't super comfortable with the Kyrie 7, like when I was playing it, I don't know, <laughs> maybe when I was sliding out, it was just the rubber like ripping off or something, <laughs> but still, I mean, it wasn't terrible, but you know, I, I wasn't super comfortable with it, you know? So the traction pattern is like a little disappointing, I would say. You know, I feel like they should have done a little bit better because I mean, if you look at the pattern, it looks like it's going to be really good, right? But anyways, there's that. As far as the actual curvature goes, it's a very conservative as far as the Kyrie's go, you know? So like in the Kyrie 2, even the Kyrie 6, uh, what was, I feel like the Kyrie 3 might be one of the craziest ones. Uh, and then the four was a little crazy. The five and the six were a little bit more mellow and the Kyrie seven is definitely the mellowest. So if you look at the actual shape, it's very, very flat. And then you have the curve here where the ball of your foot is, right? Where the outer curvature is. Of course you have the rubber coming up so you have extra grip. If you look at the Kyrie six and all the other Kyries, they have a little bit of a curve here in the middle of the shoe right here. So uh, you have more of a rocking motion in this axis of the shoe, but the Kyrie 7 doesn't have that. It's more flat, like I said. So uh, I didn't really like that either all too much. I mean, it's not a huge deal because you can't notice it all too much uh, when you're playing. You know, it's kind of like, I'm kind of nitpicking at this point, kind of, but you know, that is something that I do miss uh, from, I guess, like the Kyrie 6. As far as the heel to toe transition goes, it's pretty damn smooth. You know, you have a nice curve shape here in the heel, a very, very curved shape here in the forefoot. Look at that. It's kind of crazy, right? So, you know, once you put a little bit of weight here into your toes, you know, it does this rocking motion and kind of like propels you forward. And I love this shape. Like, to be honest, I don't like shoes, you know, like the D-Rose 11 or like the Next Levels where it's like flat. You know what I'm saying? So I really appreciate this curved shape here in the forefoot. Uh, the forefoot flex, it doesn't flex all too much because there is that zoom turbo unit here in the forefoot. I mean, to be honest, it's articulated, right? So it should flex, but it doesn't flex that easily. But, you know, it's not a huge deal because of the shape, like I said. So a uh, heel to toe transition is pretty damn smooth. You know, I, the only thing is that I wish it flexed a little bit more. And of course, I don't know if there is a midfoot chain plate. Like if you look, Look at that. 
like holy crap <laughs> but i didn't really have any issues with torsional support or anything uh but that is something to mention there but like uh, a, a few of you guys did send me a video of someone doing that and I, it's not a huge deal i mean if you think about it a lot of kobe's did that you know like the kobe 9 the kobe 8 with the drop in midsole there was really nothing in the midfoot but uh all you had was the outsole and the lunar lawn drop in midsole and as long as it kind of like comes back it's, it's not a huge issue you know so uh there's that but i guess it does speak on the quality of the Kyrie 7 like why can't they just add a little rectangular plastic piece right here as far as the cushioning setup goes uh, it's actually pretty nice. I would say it's the nicest out of the five and the six. Uh, not as nice as the four because I do really like the Kushlan midsole, but it is kind of soft. You know, uh, there is a little bit of compression. I mean, saying it's better than the Kyrie 5 and the Kyrie 6 isn't saying much, but I do like the little improvement here in the Kyrie 7. So here in the heel, you have a little bit of compression which i like and it feels a good amount softer than the five and the six and you have this cutout which also helps to compress the midsole here in the back of the heel and then here in the forefoot you have a very nice zoom turbo unit if you've ever tried the Kyrie 5 or the Kyrie 6 you know what the Kyrie 7 feels like it doesn't feel like the uh, zoom strobo unit though you know like in the kd 13 it's not as easy to feel as that but once you break it in or for me personally i need to break in the uh, zoom turbo unit it gets pretty bouncy you know but it's a little bit like less bouncy than the zoom strobo unit Court feel is very good. Impact protection is pretty good as well. I was surprised, you know, my feet weren't hurting like all too much when I was playing in this. So that's a good thing, right? So impact protection, I would say is adequate. That zoom turbo unit feels nice. It's a responsive cushioning setup. So, I mean, of course, if you're familiar with the Kyrie 5 and the Kyrie 6 and you enjoyed that cushioning setup, Kyrie 7 is good too, you know, it's just the heel is a little bit better. All right, moving on to the materials. I really like the materials as far as like how it feels on foot, right? So if you feel it here in hand, it's very cheap feeling. It feels like pretty crappy, you know, but it's a very, very, very thin material. Like I cannot believe how thin this mesh material is. Not even only here in the toe, but like coming up here into the midfoot area and also here into the heel, right? It's just a super minimal shoe. I absolutely love it. And there's no strap or anything like the Kyrie 5, you know, the flight trap strap, the Kyrie 6 with the, <laughs> like they use so much rubber and plastic with that strap. You know, all, all they did was these very, very minimal, very lightweight plastic fingers, which of course that'll help for support. So, I mean, if you're looking for quality, it's not the best, but on foot, it feels awesome. And then here in the ankle area, there is a good amount of padding here in the back of the heel. Here on the sides, there's a, just a little bit. Uh, the Kyrie 6 definitely had a lot more. But, you know, I, for me personally, this is just the right amount. You know, it feels great on the ankle and it doesn't feel like too much, you know. And then, of course, the tongue is well padded too. That feels great on foot. So it's just a nice proportion of, I guess, like padding for me personally. I like to have my shoes very, very minimal here in the toe box and in the midfoot. And then in the tongue and the ankle area, I like to have a good amount of padding. All right, moving on to the fit. It fits pretty much exactly like the Kyrie 6. So very, very, very snug here in the toe box area. And I went true to size and I absolutely love how it fits. You know, like I, it's so snug that I can't even like curl my toes up. <laughs> it actually hurts to do that. So of course, if you don't like that, I would suggest going up half a size. But if you do like a very snug fit in your ball shoes, you should be fine going true to size. Width wise, it's narrow and here in the midfoot area, it, it kind of like stays narrow. It's just an overall really, really good fit. This shoe is also super easy to put on. You know, you basically have like a heel tab here. The tongue opens up a lot. You just slide your foot in, tighten up the laces and you're good to go. So that's a nice little addition there. Moving on to the supporting lockdown, no issues at all, <laughs> you know? So uh, for lateral containment, you have an internal TPU heel counter. You have the foam coming up a little bit as well here in the heel. And then here in the forefoot, you have this crazy forefoot clip, which says Nike Zoom Turbo. And in this colorway, it's kind of like see-through, which, which looks dope. And of course, that's going to contain you. And you have these fingers as well. These laces basically go through these like fingers. And underneath these fingers, they have eyelets. So once you tighten up the laces, it kind of tightens around uh, your foot for the first two eyelets here. So uh, that's going to give you a little bit more support as well. So lateral containment, 
no issues at all a lot of stability was good too you know like i said the Kyrie 7 is uh more flat than other Kyries. this alto and this four foot clip do protrude out as well so you have a nice low wide base and as for ankle support uh it's pretty good you know if you tighten the laces very very tight for the last two eyelets you get a little bit of angle support but for the most part uh, I would I would say it's not as good as the Kyrie 5. You know, the Kyrie 5, I feel like, in his entire line had the best ankle support. But, I mean, if you want <laughs> more freedom of movement, the Kyrie 7 is better for that. But I don't know why they would do that because, you know, they have the Kyrie low line anyway. So, why not just go all out and have good ankle support, you know? All right, moving on to the weight of the shoe. I believe it was pretty good, you know, pretty damn light. Yeah, it's 12.06 ounces. And then for the right pair, 12... 0.03 ounces so a little bit lighter than normal for my size the average weight of my shoes is 12.5 ounces or that's that's around there so a little bit lighter than normal and it definitely feels very very light you know it's a nice welcome change comparing it to the Kyrie 5 and the Kyrie 6 definitely right so like I said there's not a whole bunch of stuff on the shoe you know like the Kyrie 6 had that crazy external TPU heel counter that crazy uh, midfoot strap you had a lot and a lot of padding and all that the Kyrie 7, like I keep saying, has a very, very minimal upper. Feels very lightweight as well on foot. I would say it feels a little bulky here in the forefoot area just because of how much the outsole kind of like comes up here into the upper. But other than that, I mean, I really like how this shoe feels on foot. It, it feels really, really nice. It kind of takes me back to the Kyrie 4. You know, the Kyrie 4 is one of my favorites in his entire line. And it was just a very lightweight shoe uh, with good traction, good cushion. And a lot and a lot of support and so that's what the Kyrie 7 kind of reminds me of all right as far as ventilation goes it, it was okay you know there's really no ventilation throughout this upper like if you blow through it there's no airflow right but I mean it is a very very thin material so it wicks away moisture a little bit even though it, it's pretty much glued down so ventilation for the Kyrie 7 uh, I would say is pretty good all right, moving on to the aesthetics. I really like it. The Kyrie 7 is pretty up there and definitely did grow me a lot. I really like the teeth here. It kind of reminds me of the Kyrie 1s. But tell us what you guys think of the aesthetics down in the comment section below. So wrapping things up, I really like the Kyrie 7. They did a really, really good job on designing the Kyrie 7 and like basically upgrading the Kyrie 6, you know, making it more lightweight, improving the cushion a little bit, you know, so it doesn't have a super stiff file on here in the heel. You still have the outsole curvature. The one thing the Kyrie 7 is not really good at is traction though. You know, like I said, it didn't have the best bite. You know, it was okay, but I would say, you know, it's on the lower tier as far as uh, performance goes in Kyrie's line for traction. So if you're playing on a super clean court you know, or just like moderately dusty, you should be fine. If you're playing on a super dusty court, just be careful and also <laughs> do not play with the shoe outdoors at all. So uh, other than that, I mean, the Kyrie 7 is a very, very good performer. And uh, like I said, if you tried the Kyrie 6 and you like the Kyrie 6, but uh, you want it to be a little bit more minimal and I guess slightly better cushion here in the heel, then the Kyrie 7 is a very good option for that. But anyways, that about concludes my performance review of the Kyrie 7. Again, if you guys do want to cop, I'll leave a link in the description box. But that's it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.